Welcome to the fifth video illustrating the block series end-to-end -end scenario using BOPF, Sadl, Gateway and SubUI 5. My name is Tia Hillenbrand and I'll guide you through the creation of the entity set products. Overall we need three entity sets for our UI application and the second one is a list of products. The general procedure is the same as in the third video dealing with the entity set categories. But there are some differences. This time we are using the BOPF data model directly as we want to support modifying operations on the UI. In addition, the data contained in the root node of the product is not sufficient. We need, for example, the product or the supplier name, not only their respective IDs. So we have to join BOPF nodes. Again, we will first define the OData data model for the product entity set, then implement it using the service adaptation engine, and finally test it in the gateway client. So let's start with transaction SEGW. We open the project in edit mode. Then we create the entity type product header flagging the checkbox create related entity set for our convenience. We navigate through the properties and define the structure elements with its attributes. We should carefully mark the elements which are creatable, updatable, sortable and filterable. Entity types must have a key. The product ID is unique. It is an alternative key and more suitable than the DB key, which is a GUID. So far for the type definition. The entity set has already been created by the creation wizard. Now we have to set the attributes. Creation of new instances, for example, is an operation on the entity set. So we have to flag it here. But enough with the data model. We open the mapping editor using the right mouse menu in the service implementation folder. This time our business entity source is a BOPF business object node. Select it and enter its name. You can use value help which concatenates the BO and node names correctly. After the pop-ups, the mapping editor opens. Again, we can drag and drop the related elements from right to left. But what about the product and supplier names? They are not contained in the product root node. In the second video, dealing with the BOPF data model, we have seen that the respective nodes carrying this information are reachable via a 0 to 1 association. The mapping editor can follow these associations and the service adaptation engine can create the correct joins during runtime based on the model and mapping definitions. Note that in 740 language compositions have to be redefined in the mapping. They do not work out of the box. Save and activate the definition. The provider classes are generated. That's it for the implementation. Believe it or go ahead with the gateway test client. Open it in the service maintenance folder. Executing the URL displays model information. We can see now that the service consists of two entity sets or collections. Select the product header set and execute the service. 
The result is the list of products with the joint data from the product name node and the business partner root node. The service supports the selection of a single product. This will be necessary to display the detailed data on the UI. To select one product, we have to add the key, hence the product ID, to the URL. And here we are. The gateway client is very comfortable. We can use the responses request pattern. Just press the button Use as request. The response is copied to the left hand side. We change the price, for example. This time we execute a put operation. OK, the price has changed. A last check. We create an instance, again based on the response. We change the product ID and eliminate the DB key, which is provided by Bob. Creation is an operation on the entity set, so we change the URL and execute the POST operation. It works. Or oh, one very last check. We select the entity set again and search for the new product ID. Convinced? To summarize this video, we created the product header entity set in the gateway service, mapped it to the product root node, and joined data from two secondary nodes using the mapping editor of the service adaptation engine. Finally, we tested create, update, and read operations in the gateway client. Now we are ready to create the second page of our UI application.